So all of the top tech YouTubers have already fully benchmarked the new Ryzen CPUs. They've used Titan XPs, 1080 Ti's, blah blah blah. But what about with budget graphics cards? What if you want to put together a brand new system with the new Ryzen CPUs, but you want to use your older GPU until the prices go down? I got you covered. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we're gonna to be checking out the brand new Ryzen 2600X, which I personally think is the sweet spot in the new Ryzen lineup, and seeing how well it pairs with some budget graphics cards. And if you wanna see more benchmarking videos or PC building videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's finally start looking at this brand new CPU. The Ryzen 5 2600X is one of four new Ryzen second generation CPUs that just launched, and in my opinion, it's the perfect sweet spot for you budget gamers. For just 230 bucks, you're getting a six core 12 threaded monster with a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a turbo clock of 4.2 gigahertz. We've already seen from all the top tech YouTubers what this processor can do with something high end like a GTX 1080 Ti, but in this video, we're gonna see how it pairs with some budget graphics cards. I personally think that this video is going to be super useful for someone that either wants to build a new system and can recycle an old GPU until they upgrade later, or for someone that doesn't need a monster gaming PC and is happy with something like a GTX 1050 Ti. The six budget graphics cards that we'll be testing today, which is a combination of current gen and easy to find used older gen, are the GT 1030, GTX 750 Ti, RX 460, GTX 1050 Ti, and the King of Value GTX 780 Ti. Our testing platform today will also include an ASRock X470 Master SLI motherboard, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked at 2,933 megahertz, and the games will be installed on a Western Digital Caviar hard drive. And as far as the actual CPU goes, for today's testing, I'm gonna keep everything in absolute stock, even though we love overclocking and I highly recommend it, a lot more people actually just wanna buy a processor and use it straight out of the box. Because of this, I'll also be keeping the the stock Wraith cooler on there that's included, but don't worry, I'll definitely be uploading future videos about its overclocking potential to see really how far we can get with this thing. But for now, it's time to queue up the benchmarks. The first game up was Fortnite, obviously, and it ran at 1080p with medium settings, but I upped the resolution scale to 100%. I thought it would be a good idea to keep all the settings the same for every card, that way you can compare the performance. Just keep in mind that you can obviously up the settings to high or even ultra with higher end cards like the 780 Ti, 1050 Ti, 960, and even the RX 460. The next game was PUBG because I get comments whenever I don't include it, and here I went with 1080p in low settings because this is definitely a tough one to run. Here you can see that the GT 1030 was capable of hitting above 30 FPS, I would definitely knock it down to very low if I were you, and then the last three cards are certainly capable of going with a bit higher settings. Next up was CSGO, mostly because it's a super popular game, but also because it's definitely a more CPU intensive game, which is perfect for for this video. In 1080p with high settings and no anti-aliasing, even the GT 1030 was able to get above 130 frames per second, and all of the other cards were able to produce some stupid high frame rates, perfect for those higher hertz monitors. Alright, but now it's time for a much more demanding game like the brand new Far Cry 5, which I actually have a dedicated benchmarking video on by the way. In 1080p in normal settings with no AA, you can see that only one of our cards actually managed to hit above 60 FPS. Now don't get me wrong, this is definitely a tough game to run, but I personally thought that we would have seen a bit more from the 2600X here. And finally, the last game on our list is another tough one to run from Ubisoft, Assassin's Creed Origins. Here in 1080p in low settings, all of the cards could achieve above 30 at least, but just like the last one, only the 780 Ti could pull above 60 FPS. I'm also not quite sure why that 1050 Ti 1% low was so low. That could have been a fluke to be honest. Well, that wraps up our benchmarks with the Ryzen 2600X and some budget graphics cards. I think the next video with the CPU is going to be an entire build guide based around this CPU, but be sure to let me know down in the comment section what you want to see me do with this next. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel, and as always, thank you for watching, and please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.